But here's the closing bell on Tuesday. That was the closing bell sponsored by Tasty Works. Let's take a look at where things shaked out here with the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all in the green. The Dow closing well off its highs of the day, but still up 643 points, seeing some buying action here after last week's pretty steep sell-off. S&P closing up about 2.5% as well as the NASDAQ. On a sector basis, all 11 of the S&P sectors in the green. Energy, by far the outperformer, consumer discretionary, technology, healthcare not far behind. For, for more on the markets, let's bring in Melissa Brown, Contigo a Managing a Director of Applied Research, and Ryan Payne, Payne Capital Management President. Ryan, first to you, when you look at today's action, seeing some appetite from investors here to buy, where do you see the opportunity at this point? Because I think a lot of people are still trying to figure out where we're headed next. Yeah, and I wish my crystal ball was working. Um, no, actually, I think, look, you know, we've had a lot of volatility in here. In all seriousness, and I think what you want to think about here is, you know, the one dynamic that's changed a lot uh, since after the pandemic is we're in a tightening cycle with the Fed. Uh, we know we're in a higher inflationary environment, and we know historically cyclicals, energy, financials do a lot better than technology. So I realize we're getting this big bounce in tech today, but if you want to win the war, not the battle, um, I think you want to diversify further. I think a lot of investors are happy to get a bounce back in their tech stocks, but if you look at the longer term picture, Tech's probably not going to do as well the next couple of years because we're in a much different economic environment than we were the last 10 years. And that's critical when you're looking at your portfolio. Melissa, a nice bounce back with the S&P still in bear market territory. And the Nasdaq down 29 percent year to date. Do you agree with Ryan on the future of tech and strategy? Well, I think maybe, um, you know, you don't want to dismiss tech as a sector completely. Mm -hmm. You may want um, some selectivity in certain parts of technology that may actually do well. But I think in general, um, when we're looking at this high level of volatility, investors are more likely to flock. If you're gonna stay in equities, you're gonna stay towards lower volatility, lower risk uh, types of stocks um, that maybe are not gonna be quite as volatile as the market overall. And hey, Melissa, investors are still digesting the comments that we heard from Fed Chair Jay Powell last week. Anything that you heard from the Fed that changed your outlook over the next, I don't know, six, eight to 12 weeks? Well, you know, the the Fed move last week was a little bigger um, than had been expected, at least if you go back the week before, uh, expectations um, were that the increase was not going to be that big. Uh, so maybe that it wasn't really a surprise on the day, but maybe that uh, was the, the one surprise that the, the Fed is being more aggressive than I think many, many investors had been expecting uh, going into this meeting. Ryan, is this the aggressive posture that the Fed is going to need moving forward? I think so in the in the short term, yes, right? I mean, the Fed, everything the Fed's done is working, right? And they're putting the brakes on the economy. It's been a red hot economy. Um, you're already starting to see with the housing market, right? Mortgage applications are going down. Uh, commodity prices have started to come down a little bit. Um, and of course, last month, we did not see a lower print. We saw a higher print on inflation. So the Fed's doing everything in its power, uh, which is limited, right, to, to slow this economy down and bring inflation down. So my hope here is, and I suspect, because the Fed is being more hawkish now um, and as the economy slows, because, you know, with interest rates going up or the Fed raising interest rates, there's a delay there, right? It's a lag of like something like 9, 18 months before it really has an effect. The economy does slow down. They can pivot and they can be a lot more dovish later. And I would argue, you know, that's a very, very bullish sign for the markets if the Fed can actually change course at some point this year, if things do cool off. And, you know, I think they are going to cool off. Melissa, do you agree? Do you think things are going to cool off when it comes to inflation? Um, in, in terms of inflation, um, I think we're still in a period where um, if you look at the month over month numbers, they continue to be very high. So um, that means that the year over year numbers are also going to continue to be high for a while. So um, I think maybe the numbers that come out won't be higher than what we've seen uh, over the past few months, but doesn't look like they're going to be lower either. I think maybe they won't seem quite so eye-popping, but I think they'll still be fairly high. 
Ryan, you say what the Fed is, is doing is working. Are you in the camp that believes we will hit a recession in the next 12 months? 30 percent uh, of Goldman says now a 30 percent chance. That's up from 15 percent chance. Still 70 percent chance we're not. Right. So we should focus on Thank that. Thank you number. for that. I think that's. You're welcome. Hey, you know, I, I studied my math. Uh, I'm in finance. No, but in all seriousness, I think it's not a foregone conclusion. And the headlines will make you believe that. But, you know, I think the fact is, you know, maybe we go in recession. If we do, it's probably a very light recession. I mean, we have full employment right now, right? We know that uh, for every two jobs out there, there's only one person looking. Um, you know, people have money in their pocket. You know, they saved a lot of their stimulus. And I realize they're starting to reach into it now because inflation's higher. But also, you know, there's been a big... Uh, change from buying goods to buy, going out and buying services, right? People are out and about in the economy again. Just go to the airport and you can just see that people are spending money. They're traveling, they're going on trips, you know, going to restaurants. So, you know, where the money's being spent in the economy has changed drastically uh, since we're really kind of truly out of lockdown right now. So I think the consumer is going to stay strong. I think you could see maybe a mild recession, maybe, I don't know, is it like four or five quarters out? Um, but the reality of it is it's not a foregone conclusion. I think this isn't 2008, 2009 when the economy was broken, right? We're just trying to slow down a really, really hot economy. We're trying to reel back uh, a lot of that free flow and money. And that's good because we're getting a lot of the excess out of the system, like places like Bitcoin and all these disruptive technologies. So I think it's all good. And I think when you start thinking further down the line, um, you know, I think we're still going to be on really, really solid footing here in the U.S., Melissa, when we talk about the economy cooling here, just look at housing. We got the existing home numbers out this morning falling for the fourth month in a row. We still have a ways to go because prices are at a record. But how are you from the market's perspective? How is the market looking at some of the cooling that we've seen in housing? And I guess, how do you see that impacting the market here in the short term? Well, housing is such an interesting case because on the one hand, it is an inflation hedge. And, and you know, all of our research has suggested that 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 old saw is true. But on the other hand, um, it's also hurt by higher interest rates, um, you know, which that drive mortgage rates, obviously. So I think um, it really kind of depends on where we come out in this whole interest rates versus inflation. And do we start to cool down inflation? Um, if rates stay high and inflation um, uh, comes down a little bit, real estate may not be a great place to be. Um, but for right now, I, I, you know, it certainly has held its own mm -hmm. as a sector, even with, you know, um, uh, home buying going down. Melissa Brown, thank you. Ryan Payne, thank you for reminding us there is 70 percent chance we avoid it. You taught <laughs> us something today. That maybe, optimistic view. Is the media too pessimistic? Yeah, I, don't, I think, yeah, I think you proved that maybe we are today. <laughs> Appreciate that, Ryan. All right. Thank you both.